Hello everyone. Welcome to my first of four videos. This will be a four-week series every Sunday in March celebrating my 20th anniversary with Stampin' Up! I signed up 20 years ago in March and so in celebration of that I'm going to come live every Sunday in March with an amazing project that I hope will inspire you and in just a way to um, celebrate with you. This is the card we are going to make today. This is an easel card, so um, it full, it stands up like this, so you can display it on your desk or your mantle, wherever you want to display it. It'll, I'm trying to get it in the camera. It'll stand up just like that, and, and then there's plenty of room for you to, uh, to write a message in there as well. And this card is just so cute, so fun, and so this is what we're going to make today. I can't wait to, to get started. It's so cute. But before we do, there is so much going on. I have... So much to tell you guys. There's a lot going on. All right, 10 years of Paper Pumpkin has gone by. I don't know how that's possible, but 10 years has gone by. This is their 10th anniversary for Paper Pumpkin in March. And so they are celebrating by giving you a free gift. So March's kit will include an additional free stamp set. So you're going to get two stamp sets in March's kit. Um, in a, along with all the other Paper Pumpkin goodies that you always get, the, the project supplies, the ink spot. And then the Paper Pumpkin stamp set. You're going to get an additional one in March. The deadline to sign up for March's Paper Pumpkin is coming up on March 10th. That's this Friday. So if you have not yet signed up for Paper Pumpkin, subscribed for Paper Pumpkin, there's a link in the video description. You can head there and do that. If you want March's kit, if you want to be part of the big celebration, make sure you do that by Friday. That is the last day that you can um, subscribe to Paper Pumpkin to get Paper Pumpkin. All right, the online exclusives. Have you guys checked them out? They're in my online store. There is, um, there's a ton of stuff and I just love them. I placed an order last week. I'm still waiting for mine to arrive, but there's an adorable rhino bundle that I cannot wait to get. It is so adorable, but I wanted to, and I meant to show these on Wednesday. I wanted to show you guys these, um, embossing folders that are part of the online exclusive. And I know that on, on camera, they're not going to show up well. Um, but they are amazing. These are probably some of my favorite embossing folders that Stampin' Up! has come out with. They are, I think they're like the basics 3D embossing folders. There's dots, there's like little flowers or stars, and then there's like this little crosshatch pattern that's really cool. And I shared the the dots in the video that I shared, in the post, not my video, but in the post that I had on Friday on my blog, um, I shared those dots. And look at how like deep that impression is. It is so... These embossing folders are good. <laughs> so if you... Um, if you love embossing folders, and embossing folders add so much, and they're so easy to use, um, check out these in the online exclusive. They are amazing. I was a little bit hesitant to, to even get them because, um, you know, I don't know how long the online exclusives are going to be available. Sometimes they're, they can be available for a long time. Other times they might sell out real quick. So, um, but they're good to get. If, so if you haven't got those, get them um, and check out the rest of the online exclu exclusives in my online store. You can shop for those. All right, I have my March's card crate coming up. This is a class to go. This features the greatest journey bundle. The cards are are so fun. They um, some of them are fun folds, and to get that, you need to head to the link in the video description, and um, all the details are there for the March's card crate class to go this month. All right, guys, this week Stampin' Up announced a color refresh is coming. Now, as of right now, we don't know what colors are leaving, what colors will be coming in. Um, we don't know any of that. We're going to know all of that on March 29th when they release all the details. But until then, this is the time to go through your, your cardstock, go through your ink pads, go through your refills, go through your markers, go through everything that um, is color related. And if you need to stock up on ink, if you need to stock up on um, cardstock, do that now. What they have told us is if a color is to sell out even before March 29th, they're not going to restock it. If it's going to be, if it's on that, you know, to go list there, they won't restock it. So if there is a color that you absolutely cannot live without, make sure that you have ink pads for that color. Make sure you have ink refills for that color. Make sure you have cardstock for that color. Once the colors are announced, which ones are leaving, I'm, I think that they're going to go very, very, very quickly. So unless you're ready to shop on March 29th when those colors are announced, which ones are going, I would start taking inventory and shopping early rather than later just to make sure that you get those. And and then plus, if a color is, is going to sell out, 
um, before that March 29th release, then, um, then at least you're set. You're good to go. Um, but anyway, more details will be coming on the color refresh. So our last color refresh was five years ago, and I think it, it was a big one. We had, I think, 15 colors that left, and th then 15 new ones came, of course, but um, it was a big one last time, so I don't know any details on this one. Um, but make sure that you're going through all of your cardstock inks, ink refills, stamp and blends, markers, all of those things, um, accessories, embellishments. Make sure that you check those out because I don't want you to miss any any colors that you love. All right, guys, in celebration of my 20th anniversary, I'm giving away some shopping sprees. So I have a chart with 20 squares. You earn a square with every $50 you spend in either in my online store or at a class. And um, once the chart is full, I'm going to grab, pull a number randomly, and that winner will receive a 20 or not a $20, $50 shopping spree. Um, just in celebration, once one chart's full, we're going to start another chart. So um, those of you who have already placed orders, I do have a separate chart with your names on them. This I don't, I'm not publicizing a lot of the names because I don't think that's fair to, I don't, I don't want to violate any privacy and anything so um so I have a, a blank chart that I'm showing for videos but if you have already placed an order your name is on that that other chart and um rest assured once it's it's filled up I will draw a number randomly and if you are the winner I will contact you via email okay if you are shopping this is March's host code if your order is under 150 please use the host code you get some extra rewards with that all orders receive a pdf with three exclusive projects if your order is over 50 dollars or more you're going to get a pdf or you're going to get the main ticket that coordinates with that PDF. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, please share this with your crafty friends. If you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel. That really helps me out. Okay, guys, this is the card we're making today. Now, my um, 20th anniversary projects are going to be a little bit over the top. They're going to be a little, take a little bit longer. So these videos might be a little bit longer. Um, but they, it is so cute. This one is so stinging cute. It has been sitting on my desk for, I don't know, I think I finished it. I don't know, like a week and a half ago, and I just love this card. The colors are so bright and vibrant, and it is just so stinging cute, and when you just set it up just like that, I mean, anybody would love to have this sit on their desk, so it's going to sit like that on your desk or your mantle or your table, wherever you display cards. So let's get started. I think what we're going to do, let's work on the background. We'll come back to the stamping, but let's get the background pieces all I'm taking care of because I don't want to there's a lot of little pieces here I don't want to lose anything um, all the measurements for everything are in the video description so make sure to check that out and then full details will be on my blog as well after the video is is finished okay we have a piece for the inside we're gonna come back to this piece in a little bit this basic white piece is for the inside five and a quarter by four so I'm gonna set this one aside we're gonna come back to that one um, we're gonna come back to that I'll explain that later too okay so I have cut out of basic white, they are three and three quarters by one and a half, and I die cut a cloud border piece with them. So let me put them on here. Um, and I use the basic border dies. We're going to use these for the hillside too. So I use a little cloud border, and then I use this little curved one for the hills. This is a fantastic die set to have if you don't have that basic border dies. That is a fantastic one to have, and it is um, it is a staple in my in my crafting. I use it all the time. Okay, we're going to start with our clouds because I want to do a little bit of shading on them. I want to make them look like they're a little bit stormy. So grab a piece of scratch paper um, and a blending brush and smoky slate ink. And we are going to, to just shade them a little bit. Now I've cut one a little bit shorter than the other, so our bigger one is going to go in the back. And this one I'm going to add a little bit more ink on. I want this one to be a little bit darker. So we're going to layer up our our clouds and I want this one to look a little bit more stormy, a little bit more om 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 oh, well, <laughs> a little bit more stormy. We'll just say that. Um gosh, words are hard, guys. I'm telling you, you know, I have I don't have a lot of trouble talking, but when <laughs> when the camera goes up, it's like words just escape you. It's I think it's the camera effect. Okay, so just a little bit of of shading along the bottom there and it's probably not going to pick up too well in the in the video but you can see from my scratch paper what happened there and then for the for the top one the one that's going to go on the top of, I'm going to do a little bit of shading but I'm not going to go as heavy-handed with this one we can always come back and add more if we need to but I just want this one I want this one to be more 
more white, just a little bit shaded on the bottom because I want, I want it to look like the sun is coming out. So we want to make this one less stormy. All right, I think we're good with those. Looks good. All right, I'm going to put my blending brush aside and we're going to start assembling the, the front. Okay, move that because I will stick my whole hand in it. Guaranteed. Okay, let's stamp our greeting on this one though before we start assembling it. I'm going to stamp my, my greeting up there. Now the stamp set that I'm using, I'm using the Playing in the Rain bundle. The stamp set is currently available. The dies are on unorderable right now. They are scheduled to, to be back in stock the week of March 13th, which I think is next week. Not this coming week, not starting tomorrow, but the following week. So if this is on your wish list, watch for it next week. I think it is coming back then. That is when it's scheduled to come back anyway. I have some Tahitian Tide ink and rainy days are better with you. And I hope that I left enough room. I think I did. I'm going to stamp this up in the top left corner. There we go. And that's all with our Tahitian Tide ink. We're going to set that one aside. Isn't that cute? Okay. So we have our clouds ready to go. I have a piece of DSP here. This is three and three quarters by five. This is part of the playing in the rain or no, not playing in the rain, rain or shine DSP. It's part of the whole suite. This paper I have used a ton. I think I've gone through like two packages of this paper. The dies will cut out these little, these little critters for you. There is, look at how cute this page is. I haven't used this page, but it is so cute. I, I don't want to cut into this because it's so adorable, but can you see all the shine on that? It's like, clear embossing it's it adds a lot of fun texture to that this side I love too but there's some really good DSPs in here some really good papers this is the side we're using so really really fun DSPs in this one so that is in the mini catalog gotta put that down so I have a piece from that DSP make sure your raindrops are going in the right direction this one look I think I might have put my ring going in the wrong direction <laughs> it is <laughs> oh well I didn't notice until now so it doesn't matter Okay, now for my rainbow pieces, I have um, quarter inch strips of Melon Mambo, Mango Melody, Daffodil Delight, Parakeet Party, Tahitian Tide, and Gorgeous Grape. These are just scrap pieces that I cut into quarter inch um, pieces. So I'm going to use my liquid glue and we're just going to set them on in a rainbow pattern. So you can use whatever, you can cut, put some adhesive sheets on the back of this before you trim them. If you want to do it that way, I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid glue because that'll give me a little bit of time to maneuver. Now, the clouds are going to cover like the top up here. So I'm not too worried about going all the way to the top, but I want to make sure that I leave room for, for all of my colors, which I think, I think will be okay. I think we'll be okay. So I'm going to start with my... Melon Mambo. I'm going to go through with my uh, Mango Melody. Now I am making sure that they hang off the bottom down here because I want to trim off and give it a nice clean cut. So just make sure that it's going all the way along the bottom and then I'm just pushing them up against each other. Um, Daffodil Delight is next. So speaking of the color refresh guys, as we are going through this one with lots of color, this card is full of color. So I would like to know what are some of your favorite colors? What do you love? What do you want to see go? Maybe what do you not enjoy? <laughs> and, um, are there any end colors that you guys want to see come back? Um, I, I would not mind Cajun craze going. I have said that before. I think that my, um, distaste of Cajun craze is, is well known. I do not enjoy Cajun craze. So if that one left, I wouldn't be heartbroken. So, I'd love to know what you guys think. And okay, here we go. This is our last color, this is our gorgeous grape one. I'm going to set that all on there. Isn't that pretty? So pretty, right? Okay, now we're going to turn this over. And you know what? I'm going to grab my little paper trimmer because I never cut straight with my scissors. So I'm going to stick this in here and then I can cut all of this with one swoop, just like that. Perfect. Oh, isn't that pretty? These colors, they're so bright. So when I do when I do rainbows on cards, I typically go for the super bright colors. I know that um, some people do like more subdued rainbows, and those are gorgeous. But I want I want a bright rainbow. All right, my hills here. I have a piece, just scraps cut from Granny Apple Green and Parakeet Party. 
um, for my two heels, and I use those basic border dies. So these are going to go on here. I'm going to end up trimming these ends too. They're a little longer than I than I need them to be. So I'm going to line this up just right kind of where that rainbow ends is where I want my Granny Apple Green Hill. So we're going to cover up this part with the parakeet party, so don't worry about that. And I'm going to stick this on some stamp and seal. We're going to put our parakeet party hill just right up against that bottom edge. Like that isn't it cute. With the different greens, it kind of gives it dimension. Like this granny apple green one is far back in the background. This one is up close. So, all right, let's flip that over. Trim off those that edge. Trim that one and trim that one. Okay. Now, I'm just trying to get those papers out. Okay, now we are ready to add our clouds. So we're gonna add our clouds. We're gonna do these on dimensionals. So I'm gonna, just gonna take a piece of my border piece here. One on this side, one on this side. So this is the bottom layer. So this one's gonna go, I'm just gonna line it up right against the top. Oh, this piece is longer too. I thought I had cut these to the right length, but I guess not. There's that one, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna use scissors on this one because I don't want it to get dimensionals on my my other one. Okay, dimensionals on this piece too, and I'm gonna put the dimensionals right on the this piece because I don't want to go over the edge with dimensionals like my last one. So, oops, come on, there we go. Okay, dimensionals with this piece. This is our stamped one, and just right along the top of there, just like that. Isn't that cute? You have like the little stormy sky background. Oh, it's so fun. Okay, there we go. So that is our background piece ready to go. This is pretty cute, just like this. You don't even need to add the anything else, but we're going to. All right, now I'm gonna stick this on a piece of basic gray that is four by five and a quarter, just like this. And then we're gonna get to our stamping. Isn't that beautiful? Just like that. So, so cute. Okay, but let's do our stamping the rest of our stamping anyway. So I have a scrap, uh, well not a scrap, I just have a piece of white. I have a couple here, I don't know how many I'm gonna need. We are gonna use our memento. We're gonna color this with our Stampin' Blends. So we're gonna use our memento. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring my ink pad to my bunny. He's a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna ink him up this way. Make sure you have good coverage. If you wanna use your Stamparatus for him, you can. That'll work too. And I'm gonna have to stamp him this way. Stamp your little bunny. Now, any of the little critters in the Playing in the Rain would work well for this, but I love him. He is playing in the little puddle, so I think that's really cute. All right, we're also going to stamp a little umbrella for him to hold. So stamp that. Okay. Put those away. And then we need some clouds for the inside of our card. So I'm going to stamp this as well. Just like that. Okay. Perfect. Let's put our lid on that before I... Put my hand in it and we're going to do some coloring. We're not going to color our clouds. We're going to set these aside. We'll die cut these in a minute. But we are going to do some coloring of our, of our little bunny here. So I have some Stampin' Blends. Let's start with our, our little umbrella. I have Tahitian Tide for my umbrella. So I'm going to use the light. Give it a little coating of light. The umbrella is not very big. So we don't need to do a whole lot of blending on the umbrella. It's just a quick coating of light. And then with the dark, wherever there's like these little lines from the artist that so says like, this is where shading should be. That's where I'm gonna color my dark. And I'm just gonna touch it up just a little bit. I'm not doing a lot of blending. And that's it for our umbrella. Quick and easy for the umbrella, right? Put those aside. Okay. For our little puddle, I'm using Balmy Blue. Now Balmy Blue is the color, is the blue in the DSP. I wanted my rainbow blue to be much bolder and brighter. So that's why I went with the Dayesian Tide. But the Balmy Blue I wanna bring back in because I want to um, tie in that DSP and I want to make it look like this is the this is the color of the rain. So doing a full layer of light balmy blue here. And then we'll go in with the dark. And I'm going to add some dark under his foot. And then on these little ripple lines, some dark here. The dark and light balmy blue are not that different in color, so if you really want to get a darker shade on here, you can either add some light night of navy or just keep going over with the dark balmy blue. All right, but that's it for our dark. Okay, for our jacket, 
we have Melon Mambo. I'm also going to use Melon Mambo for his ears and the nose. For the nose, we're going to do dark Melon Mambo all over his nose. And for the dark, as long as it's out, I'm going to go ahead and add some dark. So dark along his little jacket, the top of his jacket, along the bottom here, under his arm, along the bottom, and then along the bottom on this one, this side, up to the arm, and then in here, some dark some dark areas there. Okay, so that's where my dark is. We'll probably come back with the dark again. With my light, I'm going to blend that out. And this is Melon Mambo. I don't know if I said Melon Mambo, but it's Melon Mambo. Okay, we're going to blend those colors out. And then if it needs any more definition, if we want to get it darker or just make it look darker, we can go back in with our dark. So I think I'm going to let it kind of sit and dry and see what it looks like. So let me close up my dark. Now for his ears, I'm going to use my light and I'm just going to go along the little edges of his ears, just like that. And then I'm going to come in with my color lifter and we're just going to kind of blend out that, that pink. So it's not like so super bright. We're kind of lightening it and just kind of blending it down and do the rest of his ears. Okay. So that is, that is our little bunny. I'm going to come back in. I want his nose to be, to be really dark. So going back over his nose and I think his jacket looks pretty good. So I think we're going to leave that. So that is our melon mambo. And then we have, um, crumb cake for, for him. Now, if you wanted a white bunny, you could definitely leave him white. Maybe just add a little bit of shading. Um, I'm going to start with my dark, um, at the base of his ears. I'm going to go in with some dark and I'm going to do that on both sides around his nose very carefully. It's the base of his ears. Now along the side of his face over here and then anywhere that his jacket is going to overlap, I'm going to go in with, with my dark. You can also do like a gray bunny. We have all of those natural tones too, which a lot of those are great for some fur colors as well. Now over his little hands where the jacket's going to overlap, I'm going to do some dark and then along the bottom of the jacket, we're going to do dark as well. And then along the bottom of his feet, we're going to do some dark. All right now we're going to come in with our light. We're going to just blend all that out. I'm going to use my light crumb cake, blend that color out just like that. You can always come in and add more color. You can't take color away. so. I always try to go a little bit lighter than I think I'm going to need. And then if I need to add more, I can always come in and add more. So I'm going to go over the parts, the darker parts first. And then I'm just going to kind of work my way to the top of his head. I need a new light crumb cake. This one is, I think this one's almost out. I'm going to go through and just kind of blend that out. And the Stampin' Blends will continue to kind of blend even after you stop coloring them until they're completely dry. So you can kind of let it be. And then if you need to come back and touch it up more, you can. All right, now the same down here. It's a smaller area than his face, so less room to blend. The other thing with Stampin' Blends is the more color you add, um, it might start bleeding out of the lines. So it's always better just to kind of let it sit dry. If you need to come back in, you can. I think that looks pretty good for our little bunny though. So I'm gonna call that good. And I'm gonna put my markers away. Put those away, I have a wink of Stella. And I'm going to add that to his nose and the umbrella. And that's gonna give us just a little bit of shine, okay? All right, so we are ready for our die cutting. So let's die cut these. Grab your, your cut and emboss machine. Either that's the big one or the little ones. I'm going to use my big one because we can do all of these at once. Um, grab your plates and your dies. Okay. I'm going to use post-it notes to hold everything in place, post-it tape, because otherwise it will all jump around. So just line them up. You can use some post-it tape, hold everything down. Do the little bunny. Now with the bunny, the, um, the little puddle is not going to cut out. We're going to have to fussy cut the little puddle. The die does not cut out the little puddle. So you can see the die will only cut out the little bunny, not the puddle. Um, don't ask me why that is the way it is. But um, I think I 
when I first saw that, I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. I don't like that at all. But the more that I use this set, the more I actually like that feature because if you wanted to use the bunny in a scene without a puddle, you have the option. You just don't color the puddle and then you can still cut him out without that puddle. So I think it actually makes it a little bit more versatile. And the puddle is very easy to fussy cut if you do want to have the puddle. So don't worry about that. All right, let me pull these off. I'm almost to the point where I need some new plates. My plates are getting really bad. All right, so we have our clouds. Pull this one off from the tape. There we go. We're gonna come back to the clouds in just a minute. We have our little umbrella piece that is sparkly. He is so fun. Put that die aside. And we have our, our little bunny. Isn't he cute? He's so cute. Okay, so let's grab the the puddle. And we will fussy cut that. It's it's pretty easy to do and it doesn't take too long. So so don't worry too much if the die doesn't cut it out. We can always cut it out. And you can always stamp this if you're making a not on this card, but if you're making a different scene where he's just going on maybe a white circle or something, you can always just stamp the the image again directly onto that and then just pop up the little bunny part. Okay, so there's our little, our bunny, and our umbrella. So let's add them to the card. So I'm going to start with my with my puddle, because I want to make sure that I line my bunny up. I don't want my puddle to float. So I'm going to start with my puddle, just a little bit of, of glue on the back of that. And I'm going to have that right kind of on that parakeet party hill, just like that. All right, now I want him to be holding the umbrella so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a dimensional and put it on the back of his hand and you're gonna see the dimensional poking through there and we're gonna just cover that up with the umbrella Oop, I almost dropped that on the floor I'm gonna cover that up with the umbrella it's gonna look like he's holding it and that entire dimensional is all covered up and you don't have to worry about how to adhere that so let's put a few more dimensionals on the back of him just to hold everything in place and we have the one that's holding the umbrella in place. And then all you need to do is just line up his little foot into that puddle. And he is in the exact right spot. <laughs> Isn't that cute? He's so cute. Okay, let's work on, on the pieces for the inside now. Now I took more of those quarter inch pieces of those same colors. We have the Melon Mambo Mango Melody, Daffodil Delight, Parakeet Party, Tahitian Tide, and Gorgeous Grape. And I just adhered them to a scrap of basic white. So they are all on basic white now. So they are just one piece that I can move around, which is good because we're going to pop that up on the inside. For our little clouds here, I want to give them a little bit of shading. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the clouds on the front. We're going to bring in our blending brush. We're going to bring in our smoky slate. And I'm just going to blend the bottom of these. Actually, I'm going to pick them up to do this. I just kind of brush the bottom of these. They're smaller pieces, so so it's easier to pick them up this way. Just kind of brush the, the bottoms. Now, if you had the small blending brushes in our mini catalog, you could use those too. And I have one right here. I'll pull them out so you can see the size difference. Just brush the bottoms. So these are our little mini ones. They are super cute. You see how much bigger this one is? Um, this one would work perfect for this project because we're doing very little blending, but the they are the same. They all have the same little bristles. They're nice and soft. So if you'd rather have the mini ones, the mini ones will work as well. Any size you want will work. Okay. Put those away. So we have our little piece ready to go. We have this. We're going to pop this up on dimensionals. So I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of this. And I'm just going to do the top. We're going to end up cutting off a piece of this. So just put them on the top. And then just kind of line this up, kind of center it along the bottom, just like that. Okay, very cute. All right, I'm gonna have to cut some, some side pieces here for our clouds. Okay, so for our biggest one, let's pull this in so we can see what we're doing here. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put my dimensionals toward the top because the bottom of the clouds is gonna overlap the rainbow here. I'm going to put this biggest one right here. I'm going to go for the next biggest one. Make sure your dimensionals are toward the top. This one's going to go up here. And then for this little one, we are just going to kind of 
overlap that in the middle. I'll just use some liquid glue for that. No dimensional needed for him. Just like that. All right. So cute. So that is the inside. So let's trim off the back of this. So I'll grab my little mini cutter. So there's a lot of steps in this card, but I think it's totally worth it. Now, am I going to make like 14 of these? Probably not. But a couple of these for some really good friends is totally doable. Now, I want to finish up this um, little rainbow here. And you can do this before you add the clouds or after. But I am just going to go through and add some Wink of Stella to my whole rainbow. And that's just going to add even more sparkle on the inside. And you can also put Wink of Stella on the rainbow in the front, too, if you want lots of sparkle and shimmer. But I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up. It is so pretty. Wink of Stella is one of my favorites. It's glitter in a pen. It's so pretty. All right, now I do want to add one other little greeting down here. This is Friends in Any Kind of Weather. And this is actually from the Paper Pumpkin in February. Now, I typically don't pull out my Paper Pumpkins stamp sets for additional projects like this, but I thought this greeting was perfect. Oh, that's going to be perfect. I thought this greeting was perfect, and so I want to, I want to pull it in. So Friends in Any Kind of Weather. You can also use another greeting from that Playing in the Rain stamp set or anything else that you have. So I just stamped that along the bottom of a scrap, scrap piece of paper, and then we'll just trim this up to the height of the height and length of the word. So let's pull that out. So cute, right? All right, where's my where's my glue? So just a little bit of this, just along the bottom, just like this, and. Our inside is all done. Okay, that is our inside piece, isn't it? I mean, this alone too is pretty, pretty spectacular. Okay, well, let's put that aside and let's talk about our card base. We're almost done, guys. I promise. So I have your a regular size card base. This is eleven by four and a quarter, and it's scored in half at five and a quarter, or not five and a quarter, five and a half. Measurements in the video description. Check those out. And then it's scored again at two and three quarters. We're going to fold that one. So what you want it to do is to make, when it's folded, you want it to make a triangle. Okay. So make sure that the fold lines go in the correct way on that. Now we're going to take that front piece that we worked so hard to get perfect. We're going to take that front piece. We're going to adhere it on here. Now when you adhere it on here, make sure that you are only adding adhesive to the bottom half. If you put adhesive on the entire piece, on the entire piece of here, your card is not going to open. It's not going to have that easel fold open. Okay, so you have to make sure that you're only putting adhesive on the bottom half. So I just kind of put these next to each other. Let me grab my scissors here. Let's cut up some of these edge pieces. And oh, let me double check which side's the bottom. <laughs> so just on that bottom half, add your adhesive. I'm using my, my end pieces, my edge pieces of the dimensionals. They are fantastic for this. Okay. Peel all those backings off. And I just want to make sure this piece is all tucked in. Okay. And just lay that nice and flat. Just line up those edges, even edges all the way around. And make sure it is only adhered on that bottom half. And then your piece is going to stand up. Now, obviously, we need something to hold it up because it's not, it's not staying up. So that's where this piece comes in. So now we're going to adhere this piece to the inside of our card base. You're going to have plenty of room to write. And this will now hold up our, our little easel piece. Isn't that adorable? It is, it is so cute. This is maybe one of the, my favorite cards. I love this card so much. It's so cute. So that is it for this card. Now, I didn't add a single accessory. I didn't add any ribbon. Um, I went back and forth on it for a couple of days, but I, at the end, I just, I didn't think I needed it. I think the colors stand out. I think that Wink of Stella adds, adds a bit of sparkle and shine for accessories, so I don't think it needs it, but if you wanted to add something, you absolutely could. So anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think about this card. So fun. So next week for my 20th anniversary celebration, we will be doing another super fun project. I have a couple ideas. I'm not sure what we'll be doing yet, but um, it'll be amazing. Don't worry. Um, I will also be live on my business page on Wednesday, so you can um, see another fun project there. It won't be as elaborate 
as this one, but it'll be super cute. I promise. Isn't it cute? I just, I, I've been playing with this one for like a week. It's so fun. All right, guys, if you are shopping, please head to my online store. Use this host code. Please share this with you, your crafty friends. If you're on Facebook or um, like, and subscribe to my channel, if you're on YouTube, that really helps me out. All right, guys, have a great rest of your weekend and I will see you guys later. Bye.